Logan Square on the north side of Chicago was once an all white neighborhood, but the white flight was taking place. Puerto Ricans and Mexicans were moving in. Logan Square would become the motherland to a powerful gang. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I spit to my back for my shoelaces. God out, should have seen the look on their faces. All jealous cause your boys. Members of the Chicago and Florida gang created coast to coast chaos, according to federal law enforcement, operating an organization as if it was a five Fortune 500 firm. Tonight, the I-Team has learned that the grand jury indictments have been unsealed in South Florida against five suspected gang killers who were allegedly in cahoots with their gang brothers in Chicago, supposedly committing murders and other crimes here and there. According to the indictment, they were part of the Imperial Gangster Street Gang that originated on Chicago's north side in the early 1960s. Federal authorities tonight say the gang has evolved into a national organized crime threat, even though their gang color is pink and symbol is a cartoon character. Tonight, those seen here and several others under arrest are accused of multiple murders in Chicago, East Chicago, Indiana, and South Florida. Federal indictments state the men aim to enrich gang leadership and members and that they protected their power in drug trade territory through threats, intimidation, torture, and murder. The FBI says they would issue what was branded a CCSOS, shoot on sight order, or a CKOS, kill on sight, targeting gang members who were thought to be cooperating with police. Among those accused, 25-year-old Lionel Leo Carrera, 27-year-old Alex Enrique Arock Samariba, and Ramon Porky Madruga, who was 28. During the federal investigation, agents say they found gang territory in Chicago given names such as Devil Side and Dark Side. Franklin Park was called the Jungle and Northwest Indiana was Harbor or No Love Side. In Chicago, police say gang guns fuel gang shootings and killings and compose the majority of the city's violent crime problem. Tonight, Justice Department officials say indictments against the Imperial gangster leaders help to dismantle what they call the bloodshed. Hey, what's up guys? My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, suansa la suburban, let's take a ride at Logan Square. What's up guys? Welcome back to another Gang Life episode. I've told you guys in the past, the reason why I share this, this part of my story is because I grew up in this environment Chicago has a very unique gang culture with logos, graffiti, colors, I mean, you name it, and it dates back to Al Capone days, and, and it is what it is, you know? It's a city amongst gangsters, gangsters among cities. <laughs> but let's get started. Logan Square is located north of Humble Park on the north side of Chicago. It's home to a lot of gangs out that way. Uh, south side is very, very different compared to the north side, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more. But in the 1960s, it was an all-white neighborhood. But waves of Latinos, meaning Puerto Ricans and Mexicans, were moving in. A lot of the white gangs did not like this. And a lot of the white gangs back then were the Gaylords, the Stone Freaks, uh, Salmon City Royals. Remember, the gang culture back then was really by race. You know, a lot of these kids were starting gangs in order to, to stay safe, protect their neighborhoods, and protect each other. So there was, just like there was a lot of white gangs, there was also a lot of Puerto Rican gangs, a lot of Mexican gangs, and there was gangs that were mixed because of the neighborhood. The Latin Kings were the dominant Latino gang in that area in that time, and most Latino gangs, small chapters of other gangs, were flipping Latin Kings. Very few were refusing. Well, 
the Imperial Gangsters was one of the ones that refused to join and it started a war with the Latin Kings. Legends say that the pink is actually in honor of Morena, a female member that was killed by Latin Kings. But I could only, you know, state or say the research and the stuff that I've looked at and, you know, kind of found out throughout the ways of doing time with some of these guys and, and the state pin. Like I've told you in the past, every gang has a very unique logo. They have the Pink Panther with a big crown that is completely different to the Lang King crown. From the graffiti on the wall to the colors, every gang had a logo, a mascot, a way that they wrote on the walls, you name it. I mean, every, it's, everything dates back to the 50s, 60s, sometimes even the 30s. It is said that the Imperial Gangsters actually started in the early 1960s by Carlos Quintanilla, AKA Little Mexico. After, I guess, getting shot multiple times and witnessing a lot of death of his friends, he decided to get his life together at 17 and went back to school and actually ended up graduating from college. The Imperial Gangsters have not lost much territory over the time, even though they've had massive wars with like the maniacs and Cobras and and just there's been a lot of death and a lot of imprisonment as you guys seen in the last little episode A lot of them got hit with the RICO Act and went to federal prison and that's what the feds are doing now They're attack they're targeting these gangs because they're getting way too powerful and moving big amounts of drugs and just They're getting big they're creating armies. So that's what the feds do They target gangs like this when they get a little bit out of control Logan Square is starting to change again, just like it did 60 years ago. Many Starbucks are opening up on the corners. A lot of hipsters are moving in and it's changing, you know, it's changing. It's changing again like it did. But the Imperial Gangsters still remain strong in Logan Square and they're still holding their turf. Like I said, guys, I share these stories not to glorify the gang life, but to actually show you that there is a lot of history in Chicago. A lot of people don't realize that these gangs go back to the 50s, sometimes even the 30s, and that Chicago's always been a gangster city. It's been a hub for cartels. It's been a hub for gangs. It's been a hub for mob. It's been a hub for money. It's been a hub for a lot of things. But Chicago is a beautiful big city with a lot of opportunities for you, me, and everybody. But if you stay your ass in school, guess what? You can make it there too. So, with that being said, my name's JC. I am Wrong and Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live, homie. You might as well live it out here free with your loved ones and enjoy the city. I'll check you guys on the rebound.